Ornaments of Gold continues the M.J. Davoon translation of al -Quran. In the name of the law, the compassionate, the merciful, Amen. by the glorious book, we have revealed al -Quran in the Arabic tongue that you may understand its meaning. It is a transcript of the eternal book in our keeping sublime and full of wisdom. Should we ignore you because you are a sinful nation? Many a prophet did we send forth to the ancients, but they scoffed at each prophet that arose among them. We utterly destroyed them, though they were mightier than these. Such, then, is an example of the ancients. Yet, if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they are bound to answer the Almighty, the All-Knowing created them. It is he who has made the earth a resting place for you and traced out routes upon it that you may find your way. Who sends down water from the sky in due measure and thereby resurrects a dead land? Even thus, you shall be raised to life. Who has created all living things in pairs and made for you the ships and beasts on which you ride so that as you mount upon their backs, you may recall the goodness of your Lord and say glory to him who has subjected these to us, but for him we could not be their masters. To our Lord we shall surely return, yet they assign to him offspring from among his servants. Surely man is monstrously ungrateful, when God choose daughters for himself and sons for you alone, yet when a newborn girl is announced to one of them, his countenance darkens and he is filled with gloom. When they ascribe to a law females who adorn themselves with trinkets and are powerless in disputation, they regard as females the angels who are a law servants, and they witness their creation. Their testimony shall be noted down. They shall be closely questioned. They say, had it been the will of the merciful, we should never have worshipped them. Surely this they have no knowledge. They are lying. Or have we given them a scripture before this, so that they should hold fast to it? Indeed, they say this was the faith of our father's practice. We are merely walking in their footsteps. Now, I think the Hamim of the Hawamim Sawar that they think of as, the, that some of the Sufis think of as the below is this one. Because we're having these references to below. And remember, uh, this top lead, this, this clinging conservatism that you just, oh, well, the fathers or those before us have, have done this. Um, like the Salaka Sali is not just, you know, the previous generations. It's how they were righteous. That's what we're following, is how they were righteous, or as far as they were righteous. You know, if we're going to follow that opinion. Well, I mean, I, you know, that, that applies. Thus, whenever before you, we sent an apostle to forewarn a nation, those who lived in comfort said, this was the faith of our fathers practiced. We are merely following their footsteps. Now, when they're right, though, it's still um, certain material cultural terms, the, the past and stuff like this. If we follow these principles in the present, in our contemporary, in our in our circumstances, rather, rather than just theirs, um, you know, it makes it a living thing. Each apostle said, what if I bring you faith more enlightened than your fathers? But they replied, we reject the message you bring. So we took vengeance on them. Consider the fate of those who disbelieved. Now, okay, so even if they were right, they become wrong when they reject a, a, a prophet, right? But more right than the interpretation of man about a religious manner is the direct religious matter itself. 
tell of Abraham who said to his father and to his people, I renounce the gods you worship except him who created me, for he will rightly guide me. Well, to get the meaning more across, probably just said, I renounce what you consider to be gods and worship except the creator, right? He made this an abiding precept among his descendants so that they might forever turn to him. I suffered these and their fathers to live in comfort until there came to them the truth and an apostle who showed them the right path. But now that the truth has come to them, they say this is sorcery. We utterly reject it. They also say, why was this Quran not revealed to some mighty personage? from the two towns. Now, in this age, Mecca and, and Medina are the most important uh, spiritual cities. Jerusalem is third. And how the world treats it, too. If you, if you, if you analyze the issue, even subjectively, it comes out to be so. Is it they who apportion your Lord's blessings? It is we who deal out to them their livelihood in this world, exalting some in rank above others, so that the one may take the other into his service. Better is your Lord's mercy than all their hoarded treasures. But for the fear that all mankind might have become one race of unbelievers, we would have given those who denied the Lord of mercy dwellings with silver roofs and gates and stairs of silver. Silver couches to recline upon and ornaments of gold, for all these are but the fleeting comforts of this life. It is the life to come that your Lord reserves for those who fear him. He that does not heed the warning of the merciful shall have a devil for his companion. Devils turn men away from the right path, though they may think themselves rightly guided. And when he comes before us, he shall say, Would that we were as far apart as the east from the west. Truly evil is that companion. But because you have done wrong, the others will share your punishment. Will not avail you on that day. Now see, if a person has a bad influence, others will share. They'll have their consequence, but you know, just like a good influence. A bad influence is going to count in regards of how you're judged. But it doesn't matter what occurs with those who are accepting the influence. You're, you're bad. Uh, you know, it's not like, oh, they've all been punished too. Can I just, you know, get the cut of the even? No, it doesn't work like that. And you make the death here or guide the blind. Are those in gross error, whether you take, but whether we take you hence or let you live to see our threats fulfilled, we shall surely take vengeance on them. For we have power over them. And one of the things that we come across in people who make pacts, they act like, well, you know, they, they, they try to work with some demon or something that, oh, well, don't, don't take from me. Uh, if I bring more people on your side and more people in to worship you, then, then don't, you know, um, so you know where that sort of thinking comes from. It comes from polytheism. And therefore, hold fast to that which is revealed to you. You are on a straight path. This is an admonition to you and to your people. You shall be questioned all acts those of our apostles whom we sent before you. If we ever appointed gods to be worshipped besides the merciful we sent forth Moses with our signs to Pharaoh and his nobles. He said, he said, I am the apostle of the Lord of the universe. But when he showed them our signs, they laughed at them. Yet each fresh sign we revealed to them was mightier than the one that came before it. We ever smote them with the scourge so that they might return to the right path. Sorcerer, they said, pray for us to your Lord and invoke the promise. He has made you, we accept your guidance. But when we lifted the scourge from them, they broke their pledge. Pharaoh made a proclamation among his people 
My people said he is the kingdom of Egypt, not mine. And are these rivers which flow at my feet, not mine also? Can you not see I am not better than this despicable wretch who can scarcely make his meaning plain? Why have no bracelets of gold been given him? Are angels sent down to accompany him? And thus did he incite his people. They obeyed him, for they were degenerate men. And when they provoked us, we took vengeance on them and drowned them all as a lesson and an example to those who succeeded them. When Mary's son decided as an instance, your people laugh and say, who is better, he or our gods? They cite him to you merely to provoke you. Truly, they are a contention. Uh, they are a contentious nation. Now, it's not who's better, really. It's that worshiping other than God is not right, and just because some are better, it doesn't mean the worship of them is better. You know, because Mary and Jesus were spoken of well, and it's like, well, we, you know, our gods do. It's like, well, the, the not saying that you know, definitely he was. They knew, they knew he wasn't worshiping or wasn't a Christian. So yeah. He was no more than a mortal whom we favored and made an example to the Israelites. Had it been our will, we could have replaced you with angels to succeed you on the earth. He is a portent of the hour of doom. Have no doubt about its coming and follow me. This is a straight path. Let not Satan mislead you, for he is your inveterate foe. And when Jesus came with evident signs, he said, I have come to you. I've come to give you wisdom and to make plain to you some of the things you differ about. Fear a law and follow me. A law is my Lord and your Lord, therefore serve him. That is a straight path. Yet the factions disagreed among themselves, but woe to the wrongdoers when they suffer the anguish of a woeful day. Are they awaiting for an hour of doom to overtake them unawares without warning? Friends shall on that day come enemies to one another, except the God-fearing, but you, my servants, who have believed in our revelations and surrendered yourselves, shall on that day have nothing to fear or to regret. Enter paradise, you and your spouses, in all the light. You shall be served with golden dishes and golden cups, abiding there forever. You shall find all that your souls desire and all that your eyes rejoice in. Such is the paradise you shall inherit by virtue of your good deeds. Your sustenance shall be abundant fruit, but the evildoers shall endure forever the torment of hell. Their punishment will never be lightened, and they shall be speechless with despair. We do not wrong them, but they wrong themselves. Malik, you know, one of the keepers of hell, they will call out, let your Lord make an end to a, of us, but he will answer, here you shall remain. We have made known to you the truth, but most of you abhor the truth. If they are resolved to ruin you, we are resolved to ruin them. Do they think we cannot hear their secret talk and private converse? Yes, our angels who are at their side record it all. Say, if the Lord of mercy had a son, I would be the first to worship him. Exalted be the Lord of the heavens and the earth. The Lord of the throne above their falsehoods, let them blunder, let them play until they face the day with which they are threatened. It is he who is a law in heaven and a law on earth. He is the wise one, the all-knowing. Blessed be he who has sovereignty over the heavens and the earth and all that lies between them. He alone has knowledge of the hour of doom, and to him you shall all return. The gods to whom we pray besides him have not the power to intercede for them. None can intercede for them, save him who knows the truth and testifies to it. Yet if you ask them who created them, they will promptly reply that it was a law. How then can they turn away from him? The apostle says, Lord, these men are unbelievers. Bear with them and wish them peace. They shall know. And Malik, uh, some consider this with the Moloch or the Malik Taus, uh mythology and you do see some mixtures of some of that stuff and uh i, I mean uh, 
you see chain uh, outside of Islam, you see stuff going back and forth and mixing together. And if Ganag Manag is a name for Malik cows, um, one of the things we see there is that, well, if it's a, even if it's the angel over hell, then that sort of thing, right? But when you look in that area of Avesta, then it mixes with Shaitan, the cast out of place. So then it wouldn't be this entity. Um, so there's that to consider.